Matt from Iowa called in this week, and his family is what we would consider a high-income family, and they don't anticipate qualifying for any need-based funding and really having a high EFC SAI when they complete their FAFSA. Now, if you have no idea what any of these things mean and you're getting ready to send your kid off to college and you feel like you fit the criteria of having too much money and um, you're not going to get any money from the FAFSA, then this video is absolutely for you. Have no fear. Jordan Green Ellis is here. This is all about the money. Welcome to the show. Jordan Green Ellis. Jordan Green Ellis. Mr. Jordan Green Ellis. Mr. Green Ellis. Jordan Green Ellis. I know you may not feel like it, but your feelings are temporary. And sometimes they may not be telling you the truth about who you are. In fact, most times they aren't telling you the truth about who you are. You may feel like you come from the wrong side of the tracks or the wrong neighborhood, or maybe the unlikely is okay. When I was in college, I couldn't afford books, but now I write books for college students. This episode is brought to you by the College Without Debt Bootcamp coming up this month and next month. I don't want you to miss it, so click the link below to learn all about it. This is the program that I run called Caps and Gowns University that helps families just like yours decrease and eliminate student loan debt. If you want to see more information, if you want to see testimonials of the families that I've worked with that are literally just like you, click the link below, learn a little bit more, and I'll see you at the boot camp. All right, let's get into it. Shout out to Matt for submitting this inquiry. If you have an inquiry, go ahead and shoot me an email below. You can see the email in the description of this video. Now, if you fall in the category of high income, right? Um, and when I say high income, it's really a relative term. Now, supposedly the federal government has um, created more space or the Department of Education has created more space for more families to be able to receive uh, those federally funded grants like the SEOG, that's the Supplementary Educational Opportunity Grant, as well as the Pell Grant, the infamous Pell Grant, right? Supposedly they've created more space and opportunity for families to be eligible for those funds. I can't personally verify it. Honestly, in the families that I've worked with, I haven't seen much difference. But either way, um, what you have to understand is that specifically with these types of funds from the federal government, they are need based. Right. And need is really a relative term. But just to sum it up for you, essentially what it's um, going to do, rather that the FAFSA application is going to calculate your financial need based off of your household income. OK, um, now there are special circumstances and I'll do a whole different video on that, but it's basically going to look at your household income as they have their own formula, their own way to determine it. And they'll put you in categories. Think of it like tax brackets. OK, and so if you're in the lower categories or if you're in the lower income categories, you'll qualify, you'll qualify more for need based income. Those are the grants and some of the loans as well. Right. And so while it shouldn't necessarily be as high a priority for you to qualify for these funds, if you have the money. Right. And even if you don't have the money, there are many, many outside sources of where you can find money from these uh, types of awards are typically just the lowest hanging fruit to a degree because you don't have to do anything other than apply on the FAFSA for it. And if you qualify, you qualify. So a lot of, you know, families like to access these funds and I understand why. But even if you don't access them or don't qualify for them, have no fear because there are millions of dollars for scholarships and grants outside of the federal government. Okay. But back to the topic for today, Matt, here's what you want to do. You want to focus on number one, completing the FAFSA. Okay. I need you to have a very, very close relationship with your CPA as well. Again, because these need based awards and all of your FAFSA awards are going to be based off of your household income, as well as in comparison to uh, what's called the cost of attendance. So what it costs for your daughter, Madison, to um, attend whatever school you guys are going to go to. So they're going to do some simple math and then they're going to come up with uh, your SAI, which is your student A index. It was formerly called the estimated family contribution. Um, the higher that number is, the least likely you'll qualify for need-based aid. Those are those grants that we're talking about. The lower the number is, or if it's zero, you'll typically automatically qualify. I've seen some very, very um, specific cases where there were some other nuances, but again, there's ways around that. Now, if you, like Matt's family, have high income, you know that it's going to be based off of um, your tax return, right, or your household income, then you want to focus on specifically that number there. Hey, y'all, real quick, if you're here, 
your family. I call it Team Green Ellis. So I want you to join Team Green Ellis below. It's completely free. All you got to do is hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, and that thumbs up so you can stay in the loop with all things Team Green Ellis. All right, let's get back into the video. Okay, now I am not a financial advisor. Let me let me give that disclaimer. I'm not a CPA. I don't have any legal right to tell you this. This is not financial advice. This is for educational purposes only um, and to really encourage you to actually speak with the CPA to get some tax strategy. I'm not giving you that. But because this is going to be based off of your income, there's a term called AGI, okay, your annual gross income. And so that's a huge factor in determining your cost of attendance or your financial need, right? So they're going to look at that big number and they're going to put you in a category. So there are ways through the tax code that you can lower your AGI or your taxable income, okay? I'm going to give you just a few of those, not as financial advice, but just for educational purposes only. I want you to dive a little bit deeper and hire a CPA. I want you to have a very, very close relationship with your CPA for these purposes, okay? Because again, you're going to need some strategy, especially for those high income families like Matt from Texas, okay? So I have my notes right here. Pardon me looking to my left, but that's exactly what I'm looking at. Okay, number one, I want you to maximize or think about maximizing your uh, retirement contributions, whether it be a SEP IRA, Roth IRA, 401k, whatever your retirement contributions are, consider maximizing those. Again, another way for you to lower your taxable income. Okay. If you can work it into your budget, if you can figure it out, if you can add a little extra or whatever, consider that because that'll ultimately lower your AGI. Okay. Um, if you uh, give to any charities, right? If you make charitable donations, let's say you guys go to church or you know you have a, a, a charity that is near and dear to your heart that you contribute to or you don't contribute to but you desire to start, make sure that when you contribute that you document those contributions, that you have some sort of documentation through, excuse me, whatever um, uh, software or whatever uh, you know program that they use, for example. Um, one of the things that my wife and I, we, um, on our taxes, we, um, leverage our charitable contributions, uh, to our church. Um, and so our church has a platform called, uh, Givelify and Givelify allows us to look at our annual giving statements. And, um, that's the documentation that our CPA needs. Um, and so I want you to leverage your charitable gifts. So if you haven't started giving, start giving. Okay. Um, again, depending on where your income is, I don't know exactly what it is, but if you feel like you're teetering in that line where you make too much, okay, if you're in the high fives, if you're in the sixes, you're probably going to be the make too much people, okay? You're making a hundred grand or more, close to a hundred grand or more, you're definitely in that make too much category. So these are some things that you want to consider, okay? Um, if you don't already have one, I suggest that you, something that you want to think about is starting a business. Okay. If you have a business already, make sure, make sure, make sure that you hire a CPA and that you are maximizing your business deductions. Okay. Make sure that you hire a CPA. Make sure that your paperwork is all in order as it regards to your withholdings and your income so that you can maximize your, um, your deductions. Okay. If you don't have a business, start one. OK, rather think about starting one. Think about starting a business because of the tax benefits. OK, think about starting a business because of the tax benefits. Now, again, my my number one suggestion, this is advice. Hire a CPA because they know the tax code specifically for them to be able to tell you, hey, this is what you can deduct. This is what you may qualify for. These are some strategies that you can implement. OK, again, I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm telling you to hire a CPA. P A, but you definitely want to maximize your uh, retirement contributions. You want to leverage your charitable gifts and consider, if you haven't already done so, starting a business. And if you have a business, work with your CPA or get a CPA so that you can figure out some additional areas that you may not be maximizing. Okay, as it pertains to um, your deductions. All right, if it's a business expense, again. Talk with your CPA to make sure that it fits within the tax code so that you can deduct that from your income. Time is your greatest asset, okay? 
Now, if you've got a high school senior and it's crunch time, you can still do this. It obviously won't be as beneficial, but if you have more time, you if, you're, if your kid is in high school, if you're catching this and they're in middle school, even better. If you're catching this and you're planning for, you know, uh, baby Matt or <laughs> whomever, right? Um, this would be one of your greatest advantages. And this is actually something that my wife and I have done for, for both of our children, okay? I want you to open up an account for your, your babies, okay? An investment account for your babies, whether it be a 529, uh, whether it be a, U, a UGMA, um, an account that's basically going to accrue an interest that is going to grow over time. Now, time is your greatest asset. This is how, you know, this is how you build wealth, okay? This is a great wealth building tool because if your kid can get a degree and leverage that degree to get into a career with no debt, they can maximize their income, thus creating financial stability and accelerating wealth building, okay, in a timely fashion. But here's the, here's the step. I want you to open up an investment account for them, okay? I want you to do some study first and foremost, of course. The most common is the 529, okay? These are educational savings plans, essentially, right? Um, and the money is invested and it grows. The annual rate of return as of today um, in the past, uh, I actually don't have a time frame, but it's usually in between 6 to 8%, okay? So here, here's the principle, though. The principle is sacrificing a little bit now so that your kids will have what they need, Okay? Sacrificing a little bit of your income right now. Again, this is a strategy that will help to lower that um, um, your taxable income as well. So if you're high income, even if you're not in the category of high income, this is still something that I highly suggest that you do because you'll have dedicated money for it. The 529 is great. It has tax benefits and it can only be used for education. So it's not like you can really mismanage the money. If you need that type of discipline, do your thing. Okay. 529 is good. UGMA is good. Basically, the idea is that I want you to get it in, into an account that's going to grow. Not a traditional savings account. That's cool. But it's 2024, y'all. We can make that money grow faster. Okay? So open up an account. I don't care if you got $20. Put that $20 in there. $20 is better than nothing. Okay? I forgot. I'm sorry. I'm talking to high income earners. Put whatever you got in there. Okay? Whatever you can fit in there so that we can lower that AGI. Again, talk to a CPA. Because they'll be able to give you even deeper strategy. But here's one of the ways that those high income families can be able to um, potentially qualify for uh, those need based uh, grants and scholarships, rather, grants and the loans, but we're not planning for loans, okay? Um, I also would like to say to you that one of the number one factors, and I have a video all about this, I think it was Maria who I was speaking with in that video um, and her family, but Again, one of the, the biggest factors in calculating um, the COA or the cost of attendance is your school choice. I know we want to go to the big flagship. Nothing wrong with the flagship, only if you can pay for it. Because there are a lot of families, um, not to say that Matt's family is like this, but there are a lot of families who on paper, you know, make a certain amount of money, but they're cash poor, right? And so because consequently they're cash poor, they don't qualify for the need-based funding, they don't apply to scholarships, they don't find outside money, and they don't have the money they got to borrow, okay? So with that being said, utilize these strategies so we can get to that free money. And when I say free money, I'm, I'm saying you don't have to borrow in order to get it, okay? Now, again, choosing the right school is vital because your brand name schools, your flagship schools, your popular schools have premium prices. OK, so every flagship, every elite, every all of those are going to have premium prices. OK, but if you ain't got premium price money for college. I'm just saying you're setting yourself and your kid up for financial failure. OK, even if you do fall in that category of high income, I know what it's like. I've seen a lot of high income families borrow mounds of student loans because they didn't prepare and they were cash poor. OK. So if that's you, you're the high income people, even if you're not cash poor, if you're not cash poor, pay for it. And, and, and I say that humbly though, right? Like you may think it could be invested differently. Sure. We can argue that, right? But it's so much better than having to borrow student loans. Okay. Figure out a way that um, you can lower that AGI so that you can qualify for those funds. But even still, like at the end of the day, I don't want you to get so hooked on this as if it's like um, the greatest strategy in the world that it's going to dynamically change your 
uh, your college planning process. Like it very much so can have an impact, but still at the end of the day, this is not going to be enough. Okay. It's not going to be enough for you and your family, depending on what school you go to. It's not going to be enough. Um, in most cases for these types of families, um, to cover the tuition and fees. So if your goal is, um, no debt, which it should be, right? Because it can be done. Then you're still going to have to implement the strategy of choosing the right school. You're still going to have to implement the strategy of uh, aggressively applying to scholarships. And I highly, highly, highly suggest that you put money aside specifically for college in an account that's going to grow. Not a traditional savings account, not money that you can easily access and potentially mismanage. Okay. I don't want you to be in a financial crisis and have to dip into that money. So put it in a 529 because you can only use it for education. One of the things that I never want to neglect is the idea of how sometimes making decisions like this can be challenging. I understand that it's challenging, but hey, I want to also give you this reality. As parents, this is what we signed up for. And so if you're wrestling with the idea of making this sacrifice, I want to encourage you make the sacrifice because at the end of the day, it's going to prepare and propel your child to a future that they absolutely deserve. I want to encourage you with this information that I've given you in this video, as well as the idea and the understanding that because you're making this sacrifice, you'll simultaneously in time receive a, a, a reciprocation on the sacrifice that you're making. So keep grinding it out, y'all. Keep on making those sacrifices. Keep on digging in and getting the right information so that your child won't have to drown in student loan debt, y'all. There's a reason why. It's the number two consumer debt in America, second only to mortgages. It's because families don't do exactly what you're doing right now. You're on the right path. You're doing the right thing. Now don't stop until you get it done. This is Jordan Green Ellis. Thanks for watching another episode of All About the Money. I'm signing out but I'll see you next week. My name is Jordan Green Ellis and I'm your debt-free degree coach, but who I am is not nearly as important as what I'm about to say. This is Kamaya Times, one of the students that I've recently worked with who is a college freshman and on her way to a degree without debt. She actually goes to one of the most expensive schools in her state. It's over $60,000 a year and she's getting paid to go to school. Why? Because she had the right information. The question isn't whether or not you can pay the bill. So I don't want you to worry, parents, because I know you're thinking about how that premium price is going to get paid, y'all. Your kid has got a dream school and they got excited accepted into it, but you're wondering, man, what do I have to do to make sure that this bill is covered? Because I don't want my kid to ruin themselves financially. You and many others have this question, but you don't have the answer. The answer is in the information, y'all. You got to know how to get it done. Just like Kamaya and Antonio and Desiree and many other families that I've worked with just like yours, the how is in the information, y'all. So I want to encourage you to get the information. If you're wondering of how to foot the bill, if you're wondering if whether or not you're going to have to take drastic measures like my parents do did, who actually took money from their retirement to put their baby boy through college and it still wasn't enough. I still had to borrow over $30,000 of student loans. If you're wondering how to avoid all drastic situations, then I want to encourage you to look no further and come get the answers to your questions at my upcoming boot camp, y'all. I'm going to give you all the information that I give to my families one-on-one -on -one in one day. I've come up with a formula. I've come up with a curriculum to be able to give you so that you don't have to depend on anyone else. One of the greatest pitfalls that I see in college preparation is that families think that they have time. Families think that the money's just gonna pop up. Families think that the school they're getting ready to send their kid to is gonna help them pay for it. And the truth is, y'all, they're not going to help you. I wanna encourage you to get to my upcoming boot camp this month. It is the Degree With No Debt College Boot Camp. And I promise you, it'll be the best investment that you make this year. Why? Because you're gonna get so much of a return on this investment. You're gonna be like, I should have paid 20 times as much as I paid for it. There are two ways that you can join this boot camp. There's general admission, which is $50. And you'll be able to join this boot camp and get all the information that you need. And honestly, this would be good enough. But if you wanna take it a step further, if you wanna enhance your experience, I wanna encourage you to join the VIP experience. The VIP experience comes with admission to the boot camp, as well as two of my books for free, as well as a scholarship list for free, as well as a private Q&A session for free. And the last bonus is absolutely crazy, but I'm going to do it anyway, y'all. 
you'll get a month free in my private community called Caps and Gowns University. And it's just basically like the boot camp on steroids, y'all. It's so much more information. It's a community of people that are learning and growing just like you on their way to a debt-free degree. So I want to encourage you to sign up so that you can get the right information. Yes, it's going to be a lot, but you'll have access to the replay for a limited time. You'll be able to have what you need, y'all. And if you have any other questions, please reach out to my team at cgu at jordangreenellis.com. I am signing out, y'all, but I'll see you at the boot camp.